Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to look at personal expenses and how to deal with them in QuickBooks Online. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant and certified UK trainer. And in today's video, we're going to look at how do we deal with personal expenses. Now, this is a topic that's been requested for by one of the comments below. So if you have got other questions you want to ask, please put them in the comments below. Now, dealing with personal items could be one of two things. Either it's the fact that you've paid for something on behalf of the business and instead of using your business bank account, you've used your own personal credit card or something along those lines to get that item in. Or maybe it's a case that you've paid for something by accident or it's just a transaction that continues to come through the bank account that actually needs to be a personal item. Either way, within QuickBooks Online, we've got loads of ways in which we can make it really easy to account for personal items. Okay, first of all, we wanna figure out how to make it nice and easy for us to deal with personal expenses. And the best thing to do is if you look on your main dashboard, You'll notice on the right hand side we have all these different bank accounts. In this particular case we've got PayPal Capital Loan, we've got Petty Cash, we've got Savings, all sorts of different types of accounts. And what we're interested in now is we want to make sure that we can have a account for our personal items. So the best thing to do that is to go into Accounting and Chart Accounts. From here you'll have a list of all your expenses and all your different accounts you can create. But you'll notice the top ones are what we call our cash or current account. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the new in the top right hand corner. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new account. Now the name of the account, if you've got a limited company, you'd want to call it something like director's loan account. But if it's a, a sole trader, then you would probably want to call it something like drawing. So for this one, I'm going to call it director's loan account slash. Now, the account type in this case, we want it to be a cash at bank in hand. And just keep it as a cash on hand as well. Now, technically, this isn't a cash account, but it's going to be the best way for us to deal with it as within QuickBooks itself. Keeping this as a cash account means that we're going to have a lot more interaction with them. It means we can pay things off. We can treat it as an account. We can put expenses to it and everything else. So although it's not technically a cash account, this is going to help us when it comes. So now that we've got our cash account set up and I go back to my dashboard, you'll notice I now have a direct loan account slash drawing. Now, drawings is just the term we would use if it was a sole trader, um, but you could call that whatever you want. It could be a private account, personal expenses, whatever you need to do. But if you've got a limited company, call it a direct loan account. Every personal transaction, always put it in there. Also, if there's multiple people working in a company, don't be afraid to have different types of multiple company, uh, multiple accounts. You could have one for yourself, one for your partner, or however it's going to be. This is about making it easier for you to deal with all the transactions within QuickBooks. Now that we've got our director's loan account or drawings account set up, it makes it really easy for us to post a personal transaction. So if I wanted to post a transaction that was paid for by myself personally, so if I went out and I bought this phone for, and I wanted to record that, I could go and create an expense. And when it comes to the drop down menu here, I can drop down this as a director's loan. Then if I wanted to say computer equipment, something along those lines, and say new laptop, and imagine I had the attachment to put in there as well, so it was pretty pricey. And then I would have the opportunity now to be able to record that and save and close. That basically means if I go and look in my director's loan account in any more detail, I now can see my first expense in there, £1,200 for a brand new laptop. Okay, what about if it's a transaction that's coming through the bank? So in this case, I've got some transactions here. I'm going to put them in description order to make it easier for me. And imagine these Audi transactions here are all personal. And I don't want these to go to anywhere other than my personal accounts, my director's loan slash drawings account. Well, I can make it really easy for myself by ticking all three of them. I can go batch actions, modify selected, and from here, I could set there, go into my director's loan slash drawings. Now, if I need to deal with them individually, that can be done as well. So that's just a real quick way of doing it by putting them all in back. If I go into any of those individually, I go in and it's all about this category here. I want this category to be going to my director's loan or drawings account. Now, once I post that, that's then going to go against my director's loan. So if I press add and I wanted to have a look at that, 
in more detail and go back to my dashboard, have a look at that direct loan. And you'll see now I'm starting to not just show items I've paid for personally, but items that the, um, that the business has paid for on my behalf. And if I add a couple more, what will happen is QuickBooks will start to learn. So if I add the next one, and then I have the opportunity then to also create a rule from this transaction. But if I add two in the same way, row, it's gonna come up and say suggested rule. And in this case, I'm probably wise to actually select that as selected rule and even maybe auto add. So every time the Audi transaction comes in, I'm not tempted to accidentally put it against motoring costs or anything like that. I could say the rule that every time I see an Audi transaction, I'm always going to put it to my director's loan or drawing to account. Auto add means going forward, that rule will always be. Now, what if you've gone somewhere and you've paid for something that's a business transaction, but there's also personal items in there as well? Well, that's straightforward enough. Say, say this Tesco fuel here, imagine that £60 of that was me paying for fuel, and then £1.30 of that was a uh, Mars bar or something. Well, to account for that, I jump into the Tesco fuel, and you'll notice that the bottom down here, I have the option to split. So I'm going to press split and I'm going to put some of it to director's loan, some of it to motor. And like I said, £60 to motor, £1.30 to director's loan. If I've got the attachment, I can add the attachment to that as well. Save and add. Now again, if I go and have a look at that director's loan account, you'll notice that I've now got my computer edition we paid for personally. And I've got my Audi transactions and my £1.30 for that Tesco fuel, which, you know, let's say is a a Mars bar or something that goes along with that. So that's really straightforward. It's all about just assigning basically from the bank account transactions that are personal to the director's loan slash drawings account. What about though if you've got bills outstanding? Well, this is why we tend to suggest using the director's loan account as a cash account. Because say that I'm going through these, these expenses here and I'm seeing what items have I still got open and I've got here Virgin Media Business and I'm thinking to myself, actually, I know I've paid for that transaction. Actually, I paid for it personally. It's a business expense, so I'm allowed to put it through my QuickBooks, it through as a bill, but actually, I've already paid for this, so I shouldn't be showing this as outstanding. Well, I can make payment. I can change, and this is the important bit, I can change my bank from the business bank account up to director's loan account and press save and close. That way, that transaction has been paid for. Again, if I jump in my dashboard and I have a look at my director's loan current account, you'll see that my payment there for my Virgin Media expense has been shown. And that's pretty much it for director's loan and drawing transactions that happen in QuickBooks Online. What if you're using QuickBooks Self-Employed though? How would that work? Let's have a look. Okay, with self-employed, it makes our life even easier. So if you jump into the transactions page and you have a look at the transactions that are coming through automatically from PayPal and from our bank account and all the connections we've made in the past, then it just makes it really easy. Down here on the left-hand side or right-hand side, just say, we have the option to look at business, personal, or split between the two. So if I say that this expense here is a personal item, it goes to personal. If I say it's business, I then need to choose what type of business transaction it is. Or if I'm going to split it, I can say how much of this is business and the remainder will then go against personal. And that's your lot. It's really straightforward to account for personal items online. So have a go at it. Don't be afraid of it. And if you do find any problems or anything else, put them in the comments below and we can go through them. Especially the idea about creating rules. Sometimes that's the safest way to do it. If you've got that direct debit that just keeps coming out of that bank account and the easiest thing to do then is to stick a rule against it so that you don't accidentally account for it as a business transaction. What if you found a transaction though that has been treated as a business transaction but you later realise that it's actually a personal transaction? Well, if we go back to QuickBooks, so imagine you're going for your transactions and you're looking through that report that I've shown you before, that profit and loss by month. A really great report. This is going to be good for you to try and find stuff out. Hopefully find stuff that may be incorrect or be able to amend something or whatever you need to do. But this is a great report for finding trends that you may need to be adjusted for. So for example, here I've got entertainment, £48.67. If I think to myself, actually that wasn't and shouldn't have been classed as a business expense, I can click into it and then I can click into the transaction itself. And on this one, I even have the receipt there as well. So I can have a look at this receipt and go through it. And actually I can say to myself, you know what? I shouldn't have put this as a business expense. Or I realize I shouldn't have put 100% of it to a business expense. Well, it's dead straightforward. I can put another cat category in and all I would do is 
do it for directors loan again, just as we've been doing before. The category up here, if I'm changing all of it, I can change it from entertainment to directors. So I'm going to put £8.30, I want to put directors loan account. I'm going to say £8.40 is personal. I'm going to say the £50 though isn't personal. Leave me still with the same amount, save and close. And I've split that transaction accordingly. And there you have it. That's as easy as it is for putting those transactions into QuickBooks related to you personally. If you have any other questions or anything else, do put them in the comments below and we can have a look at them. Or in the next video, we're going to have a look at some more in-depth versions of QuickBooks and try and really figure out how best to use it. My name's been Aaron. I've been here for your video today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.